So I love these floss bands for a number of different reasons. They've been around quite a while and I've used them for a number of different applications. Uh, but currently my favorite application is really working using these to help with stability. And so the whole idea is uh, when I've got an unstable area of the body, maybe it's the trunk or the core, maybe it's the SI, maybe it's a, a, a knee. Uh, one of my favorites is the shoulder because the shoulder relies so heavily on soft tissue for stability. When I, uh, I, I because of that, I, I run into a lot of challenges with shoulder stability. So guys that have multi-directional instability, maybe they have labral tears that we're trying to put off surgery or avoid surgery. This becomes one of my go-tos. And uh, the whole thought process is when I wrap it tight, that's feeding the brain with a sense of stability. And it's sort of hugging the brain is what I always say. Is I, I'm hugging the brain, making it feel all soft, cuddly, warm, ready to go. Now, a lot of those mechanical symptoms go away, the pain goes away. I'm less convinced than ever that there's a big correlation between mechanical issues, tissue damage, and pain. So once I reduce that threat with the band, then it allows me to get around it so I can go to my other training. So uh, the way I do this with the shoulders, I'm gonna wrap it on the shoulder. He's just gonna be nice and relaxed. I anchor it down here on the arm, get it started, and then we just alternate. We go up over top, and then we come back around the bottom. We alternate top and bottom overlapping the band. I'm putting a fair amount of tension on it because I want that compression. And then I just keep filling in here until I have the whole shoulder covered and I don't have any holes. And then at the end, I just tuck it in to make it stick. So now from here, once I do get it tucked in, from here, then the next question is, well, what do I do with it? Um, I could just uh, leave it on uh, for a couple seconds or, you know, a couple minutes and that may give us some bang for a buck, but typically I like to go through some type of emotion. So I can just have him go here with like a shoulder flexion. He's just gonna go up as high as he can, go ahead. And notice he's gonna have some limited range of motion, right? Because I've got that joint really compressed. And so we're gonna go like, you know, we could go 30 seconds with that. We could go two, three sets of 15. Um, we can do other things as well. So he can go abduction, so he can take it off to the side or um, um, all the way up and then back down. Sometimes I'll have him just go here and go internal external rotation as he works through there. Sometimes I'll have him do like a push up off the table or push up off the ground, whatever it is. Really all I'm trying to do is compress the shoulder and then take it through range of motion so the brain feels moving through motion while having that compression and that sense of stability. So typically what I find when I do this, I can shut off mechanical symptoms, that catching popping that we traditionally think of is actually a labral tear. I really don't think that's happening a lot of the times. I can shut off those mechanical symptoms. I can shut off the pain. Now, if there is an underlying pathology, tissue damage in there, that pain's gonna eventually come back. That may be 15 minutes, it may be an hour, it may be a day, um, but it's probably gonna come back if there is an underlying pathology. But this does open up a window for me to work with him. My college athletes, that becomes really important for return to play, but a lot of times, even if you're in a clinical setting, that's gonna be important because it's gonna allow you to be able to get in, do some other exercises while they're pain-free. So check this out, great application for stability in the shoulder.